Hello, this is uh, Carol A. Twal. Welcome to my podcast, Transcending. Um, I have an, another uh, podcast called Transcending Mental Illness. And while I'm not able to make links on YouTube right now, and I'm, I may not even be able to make links on this platform of Spreaker, because um, I'm using the free B and I'm starting out with it, um, you may search Carol A. Twal, Carol or Serol, either C E R O L or C A R O L A Twal, E T O I L E. You can search it on your search engine and um, look up transcending mental illness. And um, maybe it'll, it'll take you to what I do. And uh, pay attention when you find the Hub Hopper podcast, because that's where the that's where I do my podcast about about dealing with mental illness. I want to make something very clear in the light of what I just listened to tonight during one of my uh, transcending sessions. Um, I was in the emotions and thoughts process module, and uh, this woman on YouTube was talking about. Um, the way mental illness affects the perceptions of our mind. And she was sharing her own experience, but I could relate to the experience. It was very similar to what I experience. Um, when we're dealing with mental symptoms, often, I'm speaking from my own experience again, and I'm kind of sharing hers a little bit. We will think things that we don't want to think. Um, we will uh, we will do things that we don't want to do, believe it or not. And our mind will mess with us. You know, the the dark the dark side of our mind will mess with us. And she also mentioned the frontal lobe, which is the part that controls uh, cognition, the part that stays level even when we're dealing with uh, issues. And when that goes, the amygdala, the part that deals with emergencies, like emotional upset, deals with emotional reactions, takes over. And when that happens, um, we do and think and feel things. We don't want to, or we, we wouldn't, if we were uh, out of our symptoms or do acting with our adult, our adult mind. So I wanted to uh, share that. <clears throat> and what I do is I have made up five modules of mental wellness. And what I mean by transcending is I don't act like it's not there. She was talking about how, how people in her life, and I've sort of begun to uh, keep to myself a lot because I'm getting really tired of the way many people act. I've gotten rejected a lot. And I've gotten uh, dismissed a lot. And I almost feel now like... I, and my mentor ha has been telling me to be careful with this. I've been feeling lately like I have to... I have to uh, really get it together so that people will pay attention to me. People will take me seriously. But mental illness is not a joke. And um, I'm, I'm beginning to know that mental illness is a social issue. And it might even be a political issue if, um, if governments should fund more, fund more in uh, government health care insurance. I'm talking about the United States, but probably other countries go through similar stuff. Um, healthcare systems in countries, namely America. Um, you know, the government is more often than not not willing to be creative with uh, funding. If they were, we'd be doing a lot better with our mental health. And um, I'm really, I'm really stuck in a box. In my mental health care, um, I was diagnosed with a debating a, a debated disorder. 
Um, my diagnosis was debated at the very end of my involvement in the mental health system as a client, as a consumer, or a patient, however you want to call me, whatever label you want to put on me, but a consumer. Sometimes I'll call myself a client. Um, or just, you know, someone who's consuming, who's using the mental health services. You know, a person who is using mental health services. That's the other other thing about about political and social correctness. Um, I feel like I often have to explain myself, explain how to express, you know, what I'm doing or what I'm dealing with. Um, I'm also realizing that uh, people are going to have opinions about me no matter what I say or do or think. And I'm really going to have to relax and uh, just allow people to think however they want of me and just be okay with it and uh, ignore whatever doesn't serve me in my life or in my mental wellness process. I'm kind of going around on a tangent here, you guys. <clears throat> this woman was not diagnosed for a really long time with her correct the correct mental illness and she was given some treatment that was making her worse and even making her symptoms worse and as a result of that um, she lost her life as she knew it her uh, family her her church her uh, I forget now if she worked a job she might have but the thing that struck me the hardest was she lost her support in church and that hit me because I'm, while I'm not going to any particular church, I'm starting, I've been starting a relationship with Jesus Christ, uh, since last summer. And, um, when you're dealing with churches that are judgmental, I, it's almost, it almost reminds me of when I was doing John, you know, Bible study and Matthew, what Jesus was going through when he was being judged by the Jews and the Pharisees and the Roman Empire at the very end. But especially his own uh, his own community, the Jews. So, um, uh, that those are the thoughts that are, were kind of going through my mind. Um, I think on this uh, podcast, I'm going to just share what is freely on my mind regarding uh, social, political, and mental issues. The thing I want to I want to reiterate right now is most people with mental illnesses don't want to be that way and I even studied believe it or not I even studied uh a YouTube video stumbled across uh on my feed um I think the the channel was called Big Story and I don't know if it was uh mental illness the mental illness channel but it was depicting believe it or not a narcissist who was aware of his narcissism and educating the public, educating the world on the nature of narcissism. He was even saying that narcissists don't want to hurt people, but they do want to make themselves happy, just as anyone else does. But the way they make themselves happy hurts people. And I, I was kind of under the impression that, that he didn't know how to stop, or he, he wasn't sure how to how to do it in a different way. But he was working on it in therapy, he said. And he was saying, uh, he was implying that um, we have to debunk the idea that, that narcissists can't change. Now myself, Car Cheryl E. says this. Um, if a narcissist or somebody with a mental illness is still acting out and acting out their sickness or in their sickness and not, not getting better or not not dealing with it, whatever they need to do to deal with it, I, I would need to stay away from them because it might be dangerous and toxic for me. But one principle I follow very strongly in my own mental wellness process is I hate problems. I don't attack people. I don't hate people. I don't even hate narcissists, but I hate narcissism and I hate what mental illness does to our minds. That's what I really can't stand. I really can't stand what mental illness does to our minds and how it makes seems to compel us to behave so that we end up 
whether we want to or not, sabotaging our own lives and uh, hurting people around us. So uh, those are my thoughts. Um, thank you for uh, being here. Again, you can search Carol Etoile, Transcending Mental Illness, if you want to know what I do. Hopefully, as I make more videos on YouTube and elsewhere, I'll have the privilege of posting links. All right, take care, everyone. Be safe. God bless you.